Hey guys, day three of 13 days of Halloween. I'm starting out with the Tim Holtz paper stash, uh, the Halloween one from last year. And I'm cut three ATC size pieces out of, um, it's kind of like a ledger, but it kind of looks like it has water stains. And then I'm going to take this collage paper um, called, um, it's the botanical one uh, by Tim Holtz. And I cut apart or cut out just like, um, I cut away the background from like the blooms and the and the leaves of the collage paper because I just want to collage on some um, of the leaves and the blooms. <laughs> I, I don't want to cover my paper completely, I guess is what I should say. I just want little bits here and there. And I also have um, some strips of paper left over from another project that will come out uh, probably tomorrow. Um, I just didn't want to throw them away because my Halloween stuff is precious. Um, so I'm just going to glue those on. I'm using collage page mat and I'm just going to collage everything down until I'm happy. And then I'm going to add some circle drywall tape. Um, I'm going to rip it a little bit so it has like a uh, not so even edge going on. And it has like an adhesive back, so I'm going to peel that away as well. I'm going to trim the excess off my first one before I work on my second one. And I did that off camera, but for this last one, the um, drywall tape is like, it has like a sticky back with a backer to it. And I don't like to waste any of that stuff. So um, I'm just going to glue on some of the backer paper. And then I'm going to take some of my gesso and I'm going to try to tone things down a little, um, bring them all together. But I don't, I don't want to obscure all of my elements completely. Like I still really want to see that background paper and the collage paper. But I just kind of want to tone down like the circle drywall um, tape and just kind of like I feel like the gessoing kind of helps bring things together um, and make it look more together. <laughs> so I'm going to take Blackberry Violet and Night Dina Wakely Media um, acrylic paint. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also took a baby wipe and wiped back a bit of the gesso so that um, in the center so that you could see a lot of that kind of ledgery kind of paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my Dina Wakely paints and add them to my card. And I'm concentrating them around the edges. I'm going to um, add water on my paintbrush and try to like feather it out into the center a little bit so it fades into the center. And then um, for the second one, I'm going to take Seedless Preserves and Chipped sas Sapphire Distress Stain because the paints were like a little too thick for me. I wanted something a little thinner. Um, but so I got the um, Seedless Preserves and picked Raspberry Distress Stain from Hobby Lobby. And when I got them home and swatched them, I mean, this was years ago, um, they both look exactly the same. So I think that the Seedless Preserved was labeled wrong. I think it's actually picked Raspberry. So the packaging says seedless preserves, but it's picked raspberry. <laughs> okay, then for the last one, I'm going to take laid back lilac dilutions, um, purple twilight Adirondack color wash, and magicals pigment powder in Mad Hatter mint green. And um, I wanted to keep these three cards similar but different. I like to do that when I like to do when I do more than one of like. Um, ATCs or tags or something. I like them to be similar so that they look like a set, but I like to kind of switch it up for them a little bit so they're not all exactly the same because there's no fun in that, right? <laughs> so I sprinkled a little bit of that um, Magicals around. It's a really nice light kind of green color with some shimmery elements. It kind of reminds me of what like the green kind of potion would look like if it was coming out of a bubbling cauldron. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the dilutions and the color wash around as well. This one got quite a bit different than the other two because of the green that I added. And then um, it was, I wanted a little more intense color. So I'm going to add a little bit of that Blackberry um, uh, Dina Wakely paint to some of the um, edges around my card just to darken up some of those areas. I felt like it was like a little too pastel-y, so I wanted it a little more intense. And then once all those layers are dry, I'm gonna take my black soot distress ink 
I'm going to add some like kind of splotchy areas of my card. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out on my craft sheet, sprinkle a little bit of water, dip my card in, and then I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water, move my card around, kind of get that ink like dripping and flowing around. I'm going to dip the second card in um, and add my water to that as well. And then um, for my last one, I'm really going to try to concentrate the black around the edges. For this one, the middle part is really kind of um, open or uncolored, I guess I should say. And then I'm going to take some Dina Wakely acrylic paint in eggplant and Dilusions paint in black marble. And I'm going to use a cheapy makeup sponge and I'm just going to use that sponge to kind of edge around my cards. I'm going to bring the purple in quite a bit because I'm going to put the black on top, but I want the purple to peek out from the bottom. And I'm just kind of like holding it like um, flat against the edge and letting the sponge kind of do the work to make it kind of look like a spongy look coming in, if that makes sense. Um, and then the black, I'm going to bring that in around my drywall tape so it like catches on those circles and kind of I don't want to say highlights the circles because, you know, it's black, but. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to take some weathered wood distress embossing powder and uh, an embossing ink pad. And so I'm just going to take the ink pad and press it in some areas around my card. And I don't care really too much about, um, like, it being perfect or how it looks because once I add the embossing powder, um, I can kind of make it look the way I want it to look. So I'm going to add my embossing powder. Oh, I also added a little bit of a bone stamp um, to some spots just for a little something different. And then I'm going to get the excess off my cards. And this is what I was talking about. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and knock some of that embossing powder away to make it look more like I want it to look um, and not so like everywhere. <laughs> So then I'm going to melt the embossing powder and I picked this color because it's the distress so it's kind of like um, chunky and distressed looking and I feel like that lends itself nicely to a kind of grungy kind of Halloween background. So then once all the embossing powder is melted, um, I, I felt like I needed to blend it into the background so I'm going to go back in with my Dilutions black paint with the makeup sponge and go over some of those areas of the embossing powder um, bringing it in over it but leaving a lot of it peeking out because I don't want to cover it up completely but the areas that does get covered up um, it's just like a nice kind of texture underneath. I'm going to take some black um, cheapy cardstock and I die cut a couple dies. Um, I have the bird with branches there in the middle and then this is like a frame with like a skeleton but I'm going to rip parts of the frame off because it has like this really kind of like cool ornate kind of look to it that I just want to use pieces of around um, my page and I want my branch to kind of span across all three of my cards so when you put them together they like make one complete piece but um, that they can also stand like by themselves if they don't need to be together for it to make sense. Um, so I'm going to glue down my little pieces with some glossy accents, but not around the edges because, because I'm going to run it through my sewing machine and I don't want that glossy accents to get stuck in my sewing needle. So I'm going to put my branch down. I cut the little bird off because I don't want him. And then I was going to put the first part of the branch here, but I felt like it would, I wasn't really into the way it would look standing by itself. So I don't end up using that one, just putting the branch on these, the one in the middle and the one on the right. So I'm just going to put them together so that I can line up the branches. And then I'm going to run everything through my sewing machine. So the two outside cards have one layer of stitching and then the middle card has two layers of stitching. And then I'm going to add some of the Halloween paper dolls. This is not the new pack. This is from probably like last year or two years ago or whenever it came out. It's not the new pack. Um, but I'm going to add some washi tape also from last year. Something for them to stand on so they don't look like they're floating. Although 
that might have worked. They could have been levitating zombies or something. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to add my washi tape for them to stand on. And some of these, I really don't understand why they're in the Halloween pack because this is just a guy and the other side is just a married couple. So I don't know. I guess when you add it to a spooky backgrounds. <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay. So for a almost finishing touch, I was going to say for a finishing touch, but this is not a finishing touch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add some acrylic ink, um, but I also added some white gesso in because my ink is near the end of the bottle and I added water to it and now it's like not pigmented at all. I should not have done that, but I was trying to stretch it, you know? <sighs> okay, so then for a finishing touch, I added the um, Tim Holtz clippings, the Halloween ones, to kind of make them look more Halloween-y. So they have some Halloween kind of sentiments. And this one says her luminous eyes. So I wanted to do something to make her eyes look more luminous or uh, more attention grabby. <laughs> so I'm going to take this poker tool and poke out her eyeballs. So they're just two holes. And then I have this kind of metallic sheet from um, last year's Tim Holtz Halloween paper pack. And so I'm going to... Um, back her head with this paper so that her eyes look like they're glowing like this. It's the same thing I did with the cat in day one. Um, it just, when it catches the light, it really looks like her eyes are glowing. It looks really creepy in real life. In the still shots, you can kind of see it a little bit better. So I'm just going to glue that on with um, glossy accents and then I can glue her back down. And then that's it for my three ATCs. Thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to sign up for Lifebook 2020 if you're interested. Link down below. 20% off code is LOVEBOMB2020. And thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.